brothers and sisters. Yesterday I spoke about how sweet it is for brothers and brothers and sisters to dwell together in unity. Well, that highlights an issue that uh, for many in our church family, um, they aren't dwelling with, with any brothers or sisters in unity. Many in our church family are single. And um, some in our church family are, are married to unbelievers. And so we need to be uh, conscious of the unique sets of circumstances that those situations present. Thinking um, first of the single, I mentioned about how um, being in close quarters can create an opportunity for sanctification as you uh, react to the other person and, uh, and um, react to differences of opinion and, and, um, and how sinners can respond sinfully to being sinned against. Well, of course, if you're on your own, that's not going to happen. Uh, that doesn't mean, though, that sanctification doesn't happen. I didn't meet Jane until I was 41, and we got married when I was 42, so I had a lot of years as a single Christian, almost 20 years as a single Christian, and um, 20 years as a single Christian, for a big chunk of that, I wanted to get married. And so that that time did definitely expose things in my heart. Um, just because I was single um, did not mean that the Lord uh, was not working. Quite the opposite. And he was actually using through my using my circumstances, working through my circumstances, um, to sanctify me and exposed idols in my heart, exposed um, areas of, of selfishness in my heart. Um, again, it's not as um, sometimes it's not as apparent because you you don't have another person to react to, um, and you really need to be aware of your thought processes and. Um, and aware of, of, of sinful patterns of, of behavior. And you can ask the Lord to reveal those things to you. Uh, but again, just because you're single does not mean that's not happening. But being single sets up uh, and presents a, a very real um, set of, of problems, especially for those who are, are living alone or are living with unbelievers, um, because you don't have that Christian fellowship. And, and so it can be extremely lonely um, at the best of times, let alone when we're under this lockdown. And so I would encourage you, if you're single, um, or in that circumstance, to be, um, don't wait for others to call you. Reach out to others. Um, and I, I know that uh, that um, during the times that, that um, when I was living away, especially my, my parents live here in Kelowna, but when I was living um, in Australia, and in, in the United States and in, in Toronto, um, as a single man, um, there were uh, I had had a, a circle of friends that that were um, you know, married and, and singles, um, people with with kids, people without kids, who welcomed me into their home, and who um, who, who would um, spend time with me and 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 pray for me. Many prayed for me to get married, um, but but people who would be who befriended me. You know, Psalm 68, I believe it is, talks about how God sets the solitary in homes. And even though I didn't have a, um, a home and family of my own, uh, the Lord placed me in, in families. And uh, thinking especially of my time in Australia, I had a handful of adopted moms who, who really, you know, they, they would uh, bring me, bring me food, um, and, uh, and and just would, would invite me over. Someone would try to set me up. Um, and uh, it, just, it was just really uh, such a blessing, uh, especially for the Christian ladies who would, um, would go out of their way um, to, to welcome me. And, and the, the older Christian men who would make, the, make it a point of, of mentoring me and discipling me. And it was just, you know, I, I'm re I will reap the benefit of, um, of those things for the rest of my life. And so I want to, again, to think about from the perspective of the person who's single, don't necessarily wait for others to call you. Um, it might be a little more challenging for those who are, who are more introverted. Um, but for us who are married or in families, um, also please don't forget about those who are single. Um, reach out to them and, and give them a, a phone call or a text or um, send them an email. Even if you don't really know the person that well, they would be, I, I guarantee you, they'll be encouraged. Uh, by reaching out to them. Um, and when this is over, may we all just be aware a little bit more about some of the challenges that, that people face who don't have the same set of circumstances that we do. And may we 
make the most of, of those opportunities and say, I, I want to practice hospitality by inviting um, this um, single person into my home and, and um, they, can, they can spend time with us as a family and, and really, um, and not even just, not even more formal times when you have a meal, to, you know, over a meal together, but just even to, to, to hang out together and, and, you know, for the older women at our church to in, invite um, some of the single um, women in the church and, and also those are married to younger women in the church too, but, but to, um, to come and, and just, um, just be a part of life a little bit and, and, and witness some of the rhythms and routines of, of life and, and, and likewise for the men. I would encourage you to um, to reach out to the younger men. It doesn't have to necessarily be in a in a, a, a formal, ongoing, um, regular discipleship relationship. Though I really would encourage that. that. But but even just occasionally, just to, to say, hey, you want to go out for a coffee, and ask, how can I pray for you? How how can I encourage you? What are you currently struggling with? What are your greatest encouragements? To really be intentionally um, doing that, um, and and so we we grow in unity. So single people in the church, I, I feel your pain. Um, I, I know very well. I don't pretend to know ex your exact circumstances, um, especially at the present time. But I know what it's like to be single for a, a long period of time. And I, and I know the challenges that that faces um, for, for our seniors um, who are single and, and for, for, um, for widows in, in our church. Again, that, that sets up a very unique set of, of, of um, of trials and, and um, I, I pray for you. Um, I know many in the church are praying for you. We want to serve you um, in practical ways. We want to seek ways to serve you better. And uh, and, I, and again, I, I pray that that through this time that we're all apart, that we will appreciate um, that much more what we have in our church family, and, and that we'll seek to um, to cultivate and to foster um, those relationships so that we can grow together in Christ.